Hey folks, it's time for yet another custom lesson. This one has been requested by SSS. Hey man, I love the custom lesson things you are doing. I wanted to check out how you would play with the setup I use. Custom lesson request is Corrupted Claws and Spear. A Agility, A Toughness, I'm using B Toughness. I, I'm not changing my gear up at all, by the way, just working with what I got. Prioritizing Movement, okay, that gives me some stuff to work with. Yumihami is the primary guardian spirit. Feel free to use anything else as a secondary. Ipon and Ryomen Sokuna are the two cores I use. Feel free to use any for the other four slots. I'm in the depths right now and struggling the most with Neo Tengu and Toshimitsu. Looking forward to the guess. Looking forward to this. Kindly censor my name in the video, please. I have. So you're in good shape. So let's show you what I'm working with. You can see I'm using my Corrupted Demon Horde Spear. You don't need this. The Anima bonus on Grapple uh, for the enemies I fight isn't really going to be all that handy. Uh, so just whatever you got will be fine. And then here are my claws. Take a look at what I'm using. Nothing too crazy. So let's get on to the Guardian Spirit selection, starting with Yumehami. So I went with cores that I thought would serve you really well in those fights against Neo Tengu and Toshimitsu. So Meizuki I find works really well against both. It's a little trickier to pull off, but there are many moments against Neo Tengu you can actually pull off a Meizuki relatively safely. Usually it's after a burst attack, but there are other moments in which she's just kind of awkward to deal with at close range, and Meizuki works really well. And same with Saito. Saito just has a tendency to dodge everywhere, and Meizuki's animation is long enough for whatever reason to hit him from time to time. So I like this a lot, and it's great for the moments where you need to be at range, and against those two I would advise taking advantage of that property. Now, I decided to give you something that basically both Neo Tengu and Toshimitsu are more or less weak to, which is lightning. Lightning helps a lot, so why wouldn't we go for something that gives us quick access to lightning? That's pretty much all the logic behind the Thunderstorm Oni B. And there's that. Now, for movement, I try to pick some interesting cores. Waira is very handy against many, many opponents and should not be underestimated. So right now, as it is, we have Mezuki and Waira and their stagger-based cores in some capacity. But Waira can be very handy against both of those enemies because you avoid basically all the crap that they do. And you come right up, do a good amount of key damage, and usually can stagger them. Now next, where is the Arthur Guardian Spirit? I picked Shinroku because I wanted to help take advantage of the lightning properties. So if you do decide to use Maelstrom Oni, sorry, Thunderstorm Oni B and go back to Shinroku, well guess what? Once you electrify them, you can get a lot of anima and this can be very, very helpful. So definitely take advantage of this. And there's a lot of benefits for lightning based stuff anyway. Now Epon is something you requested. You don't need to have this rank 30. This anima charge bonus is nice. If you can get it, great, but it's not really that important. I don't think you need to rank this one up at all. However, Ryoman Sukuna for sure rank this up to max. And if you are a fan of using Omeo Magic, it's great. And keep in mind, we're using corrupted weapons. We have lightning elements to play around with. So we can confuse an enemy quite rapidly. And being able to get a bunch of anima back when you're attacking is superb. Uh, all I cared about was Yokai ability key pulse. This lightning damage is just coincidental. Pretty cool. And then last but not least, as a gap closer against many human opponents, since arguably a lot of things that we have are suited for Yokai, I wanted to get something that's a gap closer and uh, again fulfills your movement desire. So Hellish Hag is really, really good. And I've used it against Saito Toshimitsu to good effect. There are many moments he likes to backdash away. Well, guess what? Hellish Hag is pretty much the antidote to that. And it's very valuable at 4 anima. So, yeah. Those are pretty much the choices I've made. Let's get on to Yokai Shift. All right. On to Yokai Shift stuff. Let's just show you what's in store for you. There is quite a lot that we can play around with. And so this will be rather interesting in my book. Against the enemies that I fight today, it's not going to be the most valuable simply because uh, they can evade all sorts of stuff. But nonetheless, there's a lot of power to be had in slowing down your targets and then mashing at them. You can get an idea of some of the combos that I use. Let me try this again because I know that first attempt was a little sloppy. All right. Boom. Very nice. And I haven't even used Wyra yet. 
So if you want to open up with Wyra, I would recommend doing that. Wyra is definitely going to be very interesting to pair here. Because you can just kind of go in with your lightning pools. Pretty sweet. Amazing if you've got the time. Looks like I couldn't get that off, but let's just switch over to Brute. Brute will be interesting because with Shinroku, we have we have the whole stagger proof buff or wh whatever it's called. Like you just can't be immovable or whatever. You can't be staggered. Here, watch. I'm not gonna get staggered whatsoever. So that can be really handy. And then having access to Tri Elemental Confusion is absolutely beautiful. So you'll definitely have a lot of fun with this powerhouse. Uh, again, against Neo Tengu, I don't necessarily think Yokai Shift is going to matter as much. Oh, come on. <laughs> but having access to Tri Elemental Confusion can really, really help you, especially deeper in the depths. So definitely take advantage of that. It is very, very powerful. So let's just show you some weapon based combos as that's going to be the bread and butter for this entire setup. Combos are definitely name of the game, and it is going to be very important for you to be able to practice these. So check some out. Ezeki immediately, and you can get a nice punish there for a parry, if you have the anima. Fortunately, having things like Thunderstorm Oni B can make our combo potential very easy because we have access to confusion. But against some of the crazier enemies, I wouldn't necessarily rely on it. So. I'll show you some other things that you can do. Pretty handy there. And Hellish Hag actually whiffing the second hit worked in my favor. Because I was able to get the Azuna drop. Let's show you some other things that you can do against humans. Pretty handy, right? It even caught him on the second time. Pretty devastating. We have access to four elements. So that's when things can work. All right, let's see what else we can do. Oh, this is always pretty cookie cutter there. <laughs> let's try it against some yokai. Of course, you can always rely upon Ipon for a lot of yokai, but not so much against humans, because if they dodge out of the way, it's going to feel absolutely terrible, which is why I have other cores. Against humans, I would actually recommend using Wyra over anything else. I know this guy isn't a human, but Wyra is very handy, and you don't really have to worry about missing so much as you would with Ipon. Mezuki is another safe option, but for the most part, um, you Keep on will miss. It's great when it works, but it's also incredibly expensive. When you can basically do arguably similar, if not better, things with Wyra against them. Show you some other things. Really? Alright, here, check this out. Boom, very nice. As soon as you do Battering Ram, literally mash Mezuki. Like, just mash Mezuki as soon as you can. Like, just don't, don't, don't delay it. Wasn't that nice with Hellish Hag? Pretty sweet. But yeah, so after a skill like Battering Ram, or actually, let me show you after Fatal Thrust. Uh, generally, after you push your targets away with Spear or with Fists, it's a pretty decent idea to use things like Hellish Hag to bridge the gap. So you can get right into the action. At least that's my recommendation. It's pretty darn good.
This setup kind of requires you to use your soul cores in very strange ways, but hopefully the ways that I've shown to you are somewhat interesting. Only V will probably be the easiest core you have to work with. And I know you're already familiar with Ryoman and Ipon, so I don't necessarily need to talk about those too much. But, oops. But definitely the other cores. They all play on some aspect of range or distance or just something quick. I mean, the exception to this is going to be Onibi. So definitely get used to them. Damn, he dodged it. What a champ. Very nice. All right, one more time against a human, just show you the couple of things that you can do, and then I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun. Okay, come here. I need you to be on a level field so I can do the following. Oh, I'll try again. It's fine. Very hellish hag. Perfect, right? Let's show you that. Let's show you battering ram with... I'm going to show it to you once more with hellish hag. And then with Mezuki, just to get that in your head. Because it's really awesome. Alright, Hellish Hag immediately, and look, it basically caught him. Alright, let's try Mezuki, and immediately after. Pretty good, huh? So now you know some decent times to use these awkward soul cores. But enough about that, let's just show you who I fight. Obviously, Neo Tengu, and yeah, we'll just get to the gameplay showcase. See you in a bit. Alright, let's put this to the test in a scroll of the damned. First boss is Renhai Abusa, who I find interchangeable with Saito Toshimitsu. The first and most important thing in this fight is getting a good rhythm going. It is very difficult, but make sure you prioritize that and the fight not only gets fun, but pretty cool. And there's some pretty cool things that you can do. For example, Iron Grip on his burst attack. Bet you didn't know about that. Well, and if you did, uh, bet you didn't expect it in here. So, ha. Alright, so my general strategy against Ren is this. I use Spear when he has fists out, because I find Spear to be most effective. There are many attacks that you can surprisingly parry using Bracing Breeze. Um, also, Fatal Thrust is really nice in the damage department, so why wouldn't I use that? And Fist I find to be very demanding, but I like to use that when he has the sword out. It's just a preference thing, so figure out what works best for you. My other objective here is also to try to inflict confusion. I'm not really having the luck right now, and that's because I just don't have that rhythm established. It is ultimately very difficult, and fortunately though, I do have the saving grace of the burst attacks, which allows me to combo him pretty effortlessly when I'm using the fists. And he's gone. But this is not the biggest threat here. Purple Ancient Neo Tengu. Now the name of the game in this battle is going to be Quick Pokes. You gotta just like hit and run tactics because she attacks basically non-stop. With Spear I have to take advantage of the range in order to get away with some of the longer animations like Windmill. Am I crazy? Yes. But that's where some of the soul cores like Lyra really shine in which if I make a mistake I can just burrow into the ground I'm immune to grabs and I can do a substantial amount of key damage. With Fist, things are arguably very difficult because I'm close to her and where is she deadly? At close range. So yeah, I need to be very careful. As you can see, remember what I was talking about in the dojo where Mezuki can be very handy in certain scenarios? It worked really well there. And so I took advantage of it. Um, but right now it's really, really scary because one mistake means I'm dead. Mezuki works there pretty well. Alright, I'm taking advantage of the fact that she commits to some animations, but honestly, don't try to compensate for any mistakes you make. If you need a retreat, retreat. God dang it, Ipon, why'd you gotta miss? That felt really bad. Ipon missing feels really bad, um, which is why I didn't lean on it too much. But alright, let's see what I can do when I can engage. As you can see, I need to be safe. I'm using the burst attacks that she does to make me feel a little safer in counter and get things off and get that rhythm in place. As I've gone into Yokai Shift, I'm trying to inflict lightning on her, which is very effective. So I'm trying to keep it up. And there's Wyra avoiding that fireball. Very nice, doing a good amount of key damage. And then I think I whiff this. Yeah, I whiff that. And then I use Mezuki 
to cleave her down. I'm trying to keep lightning up on her. I think I was trying to transition into a brute yokai shift, but it didn't work out. All right, let's go in. Let's see if I can get confusion off. Very close. Come on, can I do it? Yes. All right, now I can go for a big damage play, which I kind of do with good old Fists of Reckoning to deal as much damage as possible. Use the opponent it worked really well. Mezuki right after, sweet. That felt really good to shut her down just as soon as her key came back up. And now we're at 50% health, but yeah, this fight is still gonna be really stressful because I'm out of a lot of my yokai shifts. My anima isn't the highest as of yet, so I just need to make sure I can get my footing once again. And burst counters are probably gonna be the only anchor that I have. Um, E-Bone works really well there. I wouldn't, again, rely on it too much for this fight because one misstep and you're dead. And being close range against her, it can be very stressful. All right, sweet. I can get away with a full tornado. Excellent. Now I can probably get away with a full piercing rain as well. Let's use the burst. Sorry, let's use E-Bone. Let's back away. It'll be a little safe. All right, fists. It's going to be very tricky. My only advice against her if you're using fists is try to get basically behind her because you don't want to fight her head on. All right, let's see what I can do. Let's make sure to be safe. All right, one of the other attacks that I can be kind of safe with is Windmill, get Wyra back down, and then nearly deplete her key. Oh my God, like don't, don't make a mistake here. Whew. All right, very close. I almost died there. That was very risky, but okay. Let's get back to it. Let's go. Do some more attacks when I have some safety. You can see Ryoman didn't really work out too well. Confusion ain't that valuable, or it didn't really work against her because she's like resistant to both fire and water. All right, let's get that burst attack going and see what else I can weave in. Oh boy, oh boy, careful. All right, let's go. Deplete our key, let's see what I can do. I can safely go for a full Beyond Infinity, so I'm going to. And then what's next? Probably use Epon, yep, perfect time to do it just quick and fast exactly what I need in a scenario like this all right and then let's get some hopefully lightning off nope I'm not able to get lightning off but I'm overall doing pretty well I can get a full resounding lunge move away let's use hellish hack to just kind of avoid that attack and get some damage in all right we've got a lot of movement we're taking advantage of all right let's see what's next oh boy oh boy oh god I have very little health I was tempted to use an elixir but I kind of have like this weird no elixir policy so I'm being very cautious, and I'm sure you'll find yourself in this situation where you have low health, but you don't know what to look for. And the answer sometimes is as simple as a burst attack as it was there. With all the passives, I'm able to get my health back to full, so I'm feeling much, much more comfortable with this fight. And that is really important. Ren, Toshimitsu, and Mio Tengu all require you to be comfortable with being constantly in the fight, and that can be very difficult. So having these movement-based cores, these movement-based abilities, is so darn awesome. All right, Waira, help me out here. Thank you, very nice. Got a little bit of a stagger, did a great amount of key damage. All right, she's doing this move again. Am I going for Beyond Infinity? Can I get it? Oh, oh, and oh, very nice. Excellent finish, sweet. I did want to play with Boot Yokai Shift, but that just wasn't in the cards this time. It probably would have been really handy, but it is what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I'll, of course, see everybody next time.